Hello, I'm Alan Barnett from OpenGear, and in this demonstration video, I'm going to show you how to configure failover to cellular on an OpenGear appliance. We're actually going to start on Lighthouse um, because we're going to use the Lighthouse um, proxy feature to connect to the to this particular node. This is an OM2200, as you can see. Um, I'm going to click on here to make a proxy connection to the OpenGear appliance. Uh, via over the lighthouse tunnel and the reason I'm doing that is so that we can continue to monitor this device even when it's failed over to cellular so you can see this uh, this node has already been configured I've got some console port labels in here if I go to configure network connections network interfaces you can see that I've actually got um, an Ethernet interface uh, configured which is actually connected to a broadband connection. That's how we're connecting to it right now. Um, and the cellular, the cell modem is actually configured. I've got an O2 SIM in here, um, and that's enabled. And I've got an IP address on the cellular interface. So, um, so we've got two um, active connections on this box currently. If we look, if we actually go here, I'm using the Lighthouse Web Terminal to reach the console port via another OpenGear appliance uh, so that we can monitor this. If we look here in the routing table by typing the, the route or route command, then you can see I've actually got two console, uh, sorry, two default gateways. And have a look at them a little bit closer here. The first one is the net one, which is the ethernet interface. And then I have another one, WN0 is the cellular interface. And if you notice, the difference here uh, is, the, is in the metrics. So currently, the Ethernet interface has a lower metric and therefore will be preferred. And actually, if I ping out to, say, Google DNS, then you can see um, that's working. Now, that's actually using the Ethernet interface. If I force... Um, W10, which is the cellular interface, then you'll see that also works, um, but it has a higher round trip time because the cellular interface uh, is just slightly slower. So that's all good, um, but currently we don't have any failure for failover configured. So let's have a look at where that's set up. So on the back to the Open Gear appliance, failover is actually configured under network resilience and you can see there's an OOB failover option here if I go in here um, failover is by default disabled so you have to come in here and click enabled um, and then currently the way failover is configured you basically choose a probe interface so the probe interface is where we are going to send the probes which are ICMP um, pings. Um, and you can see here, uh, and we're going to ping out on net one, which is the uh, the Ethernet interface. You can see you can specify the probe address. This is left over from previously because I've been testing this. Um, you enter the, the probe address, uh, and then you have the choice of which interface to fail over to. So because we're pinging on net one, we could actually fail over to net two. Um, but in this demonstration video, we're going to fail over to the cellular interface, which of course is the, uh, um, the 4G um, cell motor. So I'm going to hit apply, and you can see it does warn me. You know, do I really want to do this because it's going to interrupt the um, network connectivity? And I just say yes, I do want to do this, and you can see that the details are saved successfully. So the failover has been applied. If I actually go back to network interfaces now, you can see that the cellular interface is configured for OOB failover. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to unplug the cable from the Net1 interface, the Ethernet interface. I'm just going to unplug it. It's the fastest way to, uh, to force the unit to failover to cellular. And by the magic of video editing, we fast forwarded 30, 40 seconds, and if I push this refresh button you can see that failover is now active so what's actually happened is not only is the unit failed over to cellular but the lighthouse VPN tunnel has failed over to that interface as well so the lighthouse VPN tunnel 
It's now using the new default root, which is on the cellular interface. And because we're proxied here through Lighthouse to actually connect to this Open Gear appliance, uh, that's how we're seeing this web interface. So we are now connected to this device you know, over the cellular interface. If we go over, we go back to the console port and look at the new routing table, you can see it's different. You can see before, as you remember, we had two uh, default routes um, with the Ethernet Net1 interface being preferred. Because I've unplugged that interface completely, um, that default route from Net1 has actually gone. Um, it's been removed from the routing table. And you can see I've only got one default gateway now, um, which is WAN0. So that's why the tunnel now, the tunnel back to Lighthouse, is running over the WAN0 um, cellular interface. I mean, the, the reason we use ICMP pings, of course, is because it's possible that the path can fail. Um, you know, the, the connection could fail further on you might not actually lose the interface link. So that's why we use ICMP pings to detect this. Um, that does take a little bit longer because of course the, the we, in fact we send, we, I think we need four pings to fail and we ping every 30 seconds. So it actually takes two minutes for the failover to uh, happen if the path goes down rather than the interface goes down. But the principle is the same. The routing table looks slightly different if, uh, if the ICMP ping um, triggers the failover because you would you would still have net one in this routing table um, but it would uh, it would have a higher metric than the WN0 interface. So we go back here you can see that OOB is actively um, failed over. Now if I plug the Ethernet cable back in then the open gear appliance will detect that that path is back up, it will come off failover and revert back to using the Ethernet interface as the preferred default gateway. So I've done that and if I now refresh this screen and you'll see it's gone back to configured for OOB failover. So the failover is still configured but it's actually come off failover. And if we go here now and we go back and have a look at the routing table again you can see that net one is back in the routing table and it's got the lower metric. So um, so we are in fact, all the unit has come off failover and we're now talking to the unit um, over its ethernet interface. So there you are. I mean, in summary, the um, failover configuration is under net network connections, network interfaces, uh, network resilience um, and OOB failover and if you remember you can configure the probe interface that you're sending the probe out on and the interface to fail over to and this is a simple um, ICMP ping uh, driven mechanism which sends pings and if it gets no response um, or the interface goes down then failover triggers and the unit fails over to cellular. So it's quite a simple but effective mechanism for um, causing the open gear appliance to, uh, to fail over to an alternate interface. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that useful.